Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, welcome, I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. If you've been here before, we're excited to have you back. Sometimes we need to separate the decimals from the integers. In this video, we'll explore two ways to do just that. Let's get started. Our simple data set contains a list of floating point numbers in column A. For our first equation, we'll start with the trunk function. Trunk simply returns everything to the left of the decimal point. In cell B2, type an equal sign, the function name trunk, and an open parenthesis. Next, select cell A2. Lastly, type a closing parenthesis and press enter. This removes the decimal and leaves us with the value 77. This is cool, but it's kind of the opposite of what we were going for. To extract just the decimals, we simply need to subtract this trunk equation from the value itself. Select cell B2 and place the cursor immediately after the equal sign. Next, select cell A2 and then type a minus sign. That's it. Press enter to see the result. We're left with 0.333, which is the decimal portion of the value in cell A2. All that's left is to copy down this equation to cover all of the values in column A. As a quick detour, there's another function that behaves very similarly to trunk, and that's the integer function, or int. As we saw earlier, trunk simply lops off the decimals and returns whatever is to the left of the decimal point. Int rounds the number down to the nearest whole number. This might sound very similar, but it is a subtle and potentially meaningful difference. To see this in action, let's rebuild the equation from column B and column C to see the difference between using trunk and using int. Start with an equal sign, then select cell A2, type a minus sign, then int, open parentheses, cell A2, and a closing parentheses. Pressing enter, we get the same result in cell C2 as we did in cell B2. So why did we go on this detour? Let's drag down the equation in cell C2 to cover all of the values. There it is, we get a different result in cells C4 and C9. These results are different because trunk and int handle negative numbers differently. Trunk simply returns the value to the left of the decimal point. In other words, using trunk on the value in cell A2, 77.333, gives us 77. Using trunk on the value in cell A4, negative 31.62, returns negative 31. Using int with cell A2 also returns 77. However, using int on cell A4 returns negative 32. We get different results because int rounds down to the next whole number. We get undesirable results in cells C4 and C9 because we are subtracting negative 32 from negative 31.62 in cell C4 and negative 90 from negative 89.003 in cell C9. What we wanted was to instead subtract negative 31 and negative 89 respectively. For positive numbers, there's no difference between using the equation with trunk and using the one built with int. If you know that all of your numbers are positive, use whichever equation speaks to you. However, use trunk if your data might include negative values. If you're getting value from this video, let us know by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. It's greatly appreciated and really helps out the channel. The first solution is clean and straightforward. Alternatively, we can also accomplish our goal by using the mod function. To start, in cell B2, enter an equal sign followed by the function name mod and an open parenthesis. Next, select cell A2 and then type a comma to go to the second parameter. Normally, we'd use the mod function to return the remainder when dividing one number by another. However, mod has a great trick to return just the decimal if we enter 1 as the second parameter. After entering the number 1, type a closing parenthesis and press enter. Like before, we get the value 0.333. Drag down the equation to cover all of the values. Mod with a value of 1 in the second parameter behaves similarly to the int equation. In other words, if you know your data will contain only positive values, you're good to go. You can use this equation as is, which is shorter than the trunk equation in the first example. However, we need to mod if phi, see what I did there? The equation if your data includes or might include negative values. First, copy the equation from cell B2 and paste it into cell C2. Make sure to copy it from the formula bar so that the cell references stay intact. The first thing we need to do is ensure the value passed into the first parameter is positive. We can accomplish this by using the absolute value function. In the formula in cell C2, place your cursor immediately before the cell reference A2. Enter the function name ABS and an open parentheses. Type a closing parentheses after A2 and press enter. Drag down the equation to cover all of the values in column A. This is closer. 
everything is the same for the positive values in column A. We do get the correct decimal values for the negative numbers in cells A4 and A9, but the sign is wrong. The values in cells C4 and C9 are showing as positive values, but they should be negative numbers like their corresponding values in column A. To fix this, we need to multiply the mod equation by a positive one for positive values in column A and a negative one for negative values in column A. At the end of the equation in cell C2, start by typing an asterisk. Type in open parentheses and then select cell A2. Next, enter a forward slash. The numerator is going to contain the sign of the value in column A. We need the denominator to always be positive. You can reverse this, but I prefer the function in the denominator instead of the numerator, even though mathematically it doesn't matter. To ensure we always have a positive value, we'll again use the absolute value function. Type ABS and an open parentheses. Next, select cell A2 again. Lastly, type a closing parentheses to complete the absolute value function and another closing parentheses to complete the multiplication factor. Press enter and nothing has changed. This is because the value in cell A2 is positive. Drag down the updated equation to cover all of the values. The values in cells C4 and C9 are now negative like the referenced values in cells A4 and A9. In my opinion, the trunk equation is cleaner and easier to interpret. However, the mod equation is a great mathematical solution and has the appearance of an awesome party trick. I'm not sure what party involves Excel formulas, but now you're prepared if you ever find yourself at one. In addition to returning decimal values, we've utilized the mod function in our every nth videos. If you haven't seen those yet, check out this one showing how to sum every nth row. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.